I was going through my notes after a service the other day, and I saw this kind of like strain of thought, this vein of thought through the last couple of times that I've been uh, taking notes for, from the sermon, from the preaching. And I noticed that there was this theme that kind of ran through all of it. And so I asked the Lord, I was like, Lord, why is it that it seems like we just keep coming back to this thing, you know? And, and he asked me, he was like, well, because you're not there yet. So obviously I got the message. I need to, you know, maybe commit that to prayer more. But the reason I bring that up is because, you know, sometimes we can feel like we're sitting through the same stuff. You know what I mean? Like, I think that's honest at times uh, when we let ourselves kind of like get into autopilot. You know what I mean? Like when we don't really like show up. The reason I think that's significant is because there's this theme in the Bible where there are all these like interactions with non-believers or non-Jewish people or even people that are just kind of like apathetic. They're just, they don't really care one way or the other. They just got other stuff to do, so they're not really concerning themselves with what God's doing. I want to kind of encourage you to be careful. Let me read this verse in Ephesians 4, 17. It says, This I say, therefore, and testify on the Lord, that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the futility of their mind, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that's in them. So that term Gentiles literally means a non-Jew, but is used to express the idea of a, an, an uninterested person uninterested in God, uninterested in objective truth, uninterested in growth, uninterested in, in, in like pursuing the fullness of, of their calling, their life as a person. And, and the, the significant part here is because it says they have, uh, they've had their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that's in them. Ignorance isn't a bad term necessarily. Ignorance means that you have a lack of information and a lack of understanding. The problem comes when you choose to stay in that lack of understanding, when you choose to remain ignorant, there could be a host of reasons that you choose to do that. But the reason that this is significant is because I don't don't know if we appreciate yet, as the body of Christ, the authority and the responsibility that God gives us to be the salt and light to someone else. Like, you know what you and I have that self-help people don't have and, and motivational people don't, is that we have a message that changes someone's life. We have an opportunity to deliver the gospel to someone. You know what the gospel does that other things don't? It changes people's hearts and minds. So in the New Covenant, Jesus Christ says, I'm going to write my, my laws on their heart and on their minds. So that means that we have the opportunity and we have this key when we go through things with God and we grow in our intimacy with him to see someone connect with somebody and then deliver them from stinking thinking. You know, there's this old uh, phrase that says, like, a wise man will change his mind, but a fool never will. And sometimes what that means is a fool will choose to stay ignorant and be blind to the things of God. But the new man, what you and I have the opportunity to be in Christ and give to other people, won't settle for that. It goes on in Ephesians 4.20 to say, But you've not learned Christ then. If indeed you've heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Sometimes we hear the same message for a while because we have got to be renewed in our mind. It's very difficult to change your mind. Noah preached repentance for 120 years. That seems much more gracious than I could have ever been. The scripture goes on to say that you be renewed in the spirit of your mind and that you put on the new man, which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. As a Christian, look, we're not selling like some repeated, reheated thing. This isn't the same soup reheated, okay? To be clear, we're not salesmen. We're fishers of men. What that means is that God's going to put people in our lives that need the message of the freedom of Christ Jesus, who need to hear that there's grace and love and mercy available to them to go on to completion, not to just feel good about themselves. And that's what you and I have the opportunity to do, that we put on the new man, And then we declare the opportunity to be a new man to other people. And so in closing, this is my challenge to you. Be mindful that you show up, that you hear the message, that you put on the new man.
proclaim it to other people, and then just be thankful for a moment at the great privilege that you and I have to carry the gospel message with us. God bless you.